in these problems we have functions and then we have variable expressions as inputs. If you haven't seen this before, it can be a little bit confusing at first. You know that if you have a function f of x, let's say f of x is 2x plus 2, you can find f of, let's say, 9 by simply taking this 9 and putting it in for x. So this would be 9 times 2 is 18 plus 2 is 20. So f of 9 equals 20. But we can put other things other than numbers in for inputs to functions. And we just carry out um, our activities the same way. We just plug it in wherever we see x in the function. And then in this case, we'll just have to simplify as much as we can. We can't actually come to a single number solution. Let me show you how this works with this first one. Our function f of x is 3 over x squared plus 5. And the input here is negative x over 2. So we want to find f of negative x over 2. What that means is I'm putting this expression in for x in the function. So that would be 3 over, and I'm just going to do a quantity here. Here's our input, negative x over 2. So that's in place of the x. And then the x is squared in the original function, so this gets squared as well. And then I have the plus 5. And then we just need to calculate and, and simplify as much as possible. I'm going to square this first. So this would be 3 over, well, a negative thing squared is going to be a positive. And then the fraction squared is just the top squared over the bottom squared. So this is going to be x squared over 4, a positive x squared over 4 and plus 5. Now, I want to simplify a little bit more than this. And what I have is a complex fraction. So here's a big fraction. And then on the bottom of this fraction, I have another fraction. This fraction's got a denominator of 4. I'd really like to get rid of that. So I can get rid of that if I multiply this by 4, because the 4s would just cancel. But I can't just multiply 4 by the denominator of this big fraction. I have to multiply by 4 over 4 then I'm really just multiplying by the number 1, and it doesn't change the value of anything. So let me go ahead and do that. On the top, I would get 3 times 4, so that's 12. On the bottom, I get 4 times x squared over 4. The 4s would cancel. It's just x squared. And then, of course, I have to do this to the second term here, so 4 times 5 would be 20. And I think that is as simple as that one gets. So f of negative x over 2 is 12 over x squared plus 20. Let's try another. We've got find a g of x plus 9, and g of x is the square root of x squared minus x. And got to be careful here. This is our input, but we've got two places to put it in. So we're going to have this quantity squared, and then we're going to have minus that quantity. So that would look like this. We'd have the square root of x plus 9 squared minus x plus 9. Now to simplify this, we can FOIL out what's in here. We can take the negative sign and distribute it, and then we can combine like terms. x plus 9 squared is x plus 9 times x plus 9. And I would just FOIL it out, the first terms, x squared, the outside terms, x times 9 is plus 9x. The inside terms, 9 times x plus 9x. And the last terms, 9 times 9, 81. And if I combine the like terms, I get x squared plus 18x plus 81. So that's this chunk right here. So let me put my radical sign back over it and put in the other chunk. Minus, and actually, let's go ahead and distribute that negative sign, minus x minus 9 get rid of the parentheses. Now we can finish combining the like terms. Oops, this, I forgot my x here. So I've got x squared plus 18x plus 81 minus x minus 9. So the 18x and the minus x is going to be 17x. So let me make a new radical sign here. x squared plus 17x. And 81 minus 9 is going to be 72. So I've got the square root of x squared plus 17x plus 72. That is g of x plus 9. So that's a little bit of work with using variable expressions as inputs to functions.